Hi Church, my name is Andy Smith and I am the Youth Pastor at Audacious Church in Manchester uh, and it's my privilege to share a thought with you today and I hope that it impacts you and impacts your day. Um, there's a couple of questions that I have wondered about over my life uh, and they are the following things. Why do I keep repeating things that aren't good for me and why, when I know the outcome isn't positive, do I continue to go down that same path? And um, I guess I'm going to say to you right now, viewer discretion ad is advised because you could be a little bit squeamish this morning um, or today whenever you're watching this and that's okay because this is in the Bible, so there you go. So we're going we're gonna to be looking today at Proverbs 26 verse 11 which says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Um, yep, I'm the youth pastor, I'm saying vomit in a Bible study, let's do this. So, I am the owner of two dogs. One of them is a lockdown puppy, and the other one is about eight years old. Uh, I don't know why we did a lockdown puppy. Um, no regrets, right? Anyway, they do weird stuff. They're dogs. They do dog stuff. It's normal to them. In fact, it's natural to them to do it. But for me, it's not nice. I'm constantly having to wash them because we go to the park and there's a pile of something. I don't even know what it is because I don't look... But it's just, too, it's just too tempting for them not to roll in it or too tempting for them not to eat or whatever they're doing. And as a human, if I did what they did, it wouldn't look good for me. I'm not sure Karis would ever speak to me again. Uh, she definitely wouldn't want to go anywhere remotely close to me. Um, but dogs are just doing what it is natural for dogs to do. So it's kind of okay. In the same way, uh, humans do things that I reckon to God seems like odd or hard to believe, but they are like natural to us. So there's large parts of the Old Testament where God's watching on and the Israelites are constantly doing the wrong thing. Um, they work out that they've made a mistake. They realign themselves back to God. Then they, and then about a chapter or two later on, you're reading again, they've repeated the same mistake that they've made previously. Um, and the reality is, is that sin, unfortunately, is part of what we as human beings have as part of our normal, uh, our normal behaviour, and, and which is why that when Jesus came and overcame sin, it's such a big deal. Sin and brokenness uh, actually are the answer to the two questions I asked before. Why do I keep repeating things that aren't good for me? And why, when I know the outcome isn't positive, do I continue to go down that path? Why? Because I... I'm a sinful, broken person and, bro and I have brokenness within me. That doesn't mean that I have to sin, but it does mean that it is easy and it almost feels natural to want to do something even though I know the consequences for it are not the best consequences for me. We all know and we can agree that sinning is bad, but it's far too easy to fall into. And it's almost, like I said before, natural to fall into it. And it being seemingly natural doesn't mean it's good for us. Like everything, not everything that's seemingly natural is good for us. So for an example, with Proverbs 26, as a dog returns to its vomit. Now, why has a dog been sick? I don't know. But normally you are ill because your body needs to reject something and get rid of it. But dogs, for some reason, think that's a tasty snack. It's disgusting. But they're... The fact that the dog goes back to it is because it can't help itself. It's just a natural thing. And it's the same way, really, with us with sin. Like, we go back to something that we know has hurt us in the past. We go back to something, or we can go back to something, that is um, that's harmful for us. Even though we know that we had to work really hard to get over it, or get through it, or process it, or, or, or whatever. Um, it can just be really easy. The good news though, however, there is good news, I promise you, we have good news. I've got two things of good news for you. The first one is, as I said before, Jesus came, died and paid the price for your sin, no matter how many times you mess up. So that's not a get out of jail free card, but that is the fact that there is redemption and there is always redemption because Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. And the second thing is, just as I, as a dog owner, can train my dog to make different choices, the natural might be dragging it towards the thing I don't want them to go near, but my voice says, no, stop it, come. And they come over. We too can train ourselves to overcome temptation, but also hear the word, hear the voice of God, our 
master, our king, our lord, who will direct us in a way that is not going to cause us harm, that is not going to cause us to lead into a sinful way. Um, even though the, uh, the, the urge is sometimes overwhelming, we can make a choice. We can make great short-term choices that will impact our long-term future for the better. Because most of the time, sin is a short-term decision for short-term like gain or short-term um, grati like, uh, gratification or happiness. But long-term leads to death and destruction. So today, I have got two challenges for you, and I hope that you will spend some time doing these things. The first one is a bit of self-reflection. The first one is think back t today now about to some patterns of behavior that you used to struggle with, but now you don't anymore. And I want you to celebrate the fact that you've overcome that area of your life. That's awesome. That could be something to do with, um, I don't know, a thought pattern. It could be something to do with the fact that when someone says, hey, you did a great job, your first response was, no, I didn't. It could be anything at all. It could be something way bigger than that as well. But I want you to celebrate the fact that you have overcome that and that is a great thing and congratulations, well done. And the second thing is about thinking forwards for ourselves now. What is it in our lives that we, even though it is negative for us, even though it isn't good for us, do we keep returning to even though we know it isn't right? I want you to name that thing. I want you to write it down somewhere where it's private or whatever. I want you to have a pray and I want you to think about an action that you can take right now to change your future, to do something that will, will change the direction of your future. Because this thing that you've just written down or you're about to write down, one day you will look back and it will be the answer to the first thing I asked you to do. Look back to something that you used to struggle with that you don't anymore and celebrate that. I'm really believing that there is freedom, there is hope, there is joy, there is peace, there is a, an end to the thing that you feel is keeps holding you back and keeps snaring you in. And um, I love the fact that, as I said before, Jesus Christ came and freed us from our, uh, the, the wages of our sin, which is death, because he came down on the cross and was the perfect sacrifice and lived a sinless, blameless life as a human being on the earth, fully God, fully man. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. We love you. You're awesome. If you've got any young people, get them down to youth. Email me at youth at audaciouschurch.com and I will get them connected in if they haven't already. Uh, have a great day and don't be like a dog and return to its vomit. See ya.